So you've gone through the entire chapter on technical and fundamental analysis. Now it's time to apply every single lesson into one single chart and one single breakdown on three pairs. We're going to be combining everything you have learned over the past chapter, including the bonus lessons, which means we're throwing in the zones and the moving average strategy into one overall dynamic chart structure. We're going to be applying this on Ether, Neo, and Litecoin. We'll start off with Ether. So firstly, we're going to go to the weekly chart to gain an overall understanding of where the key levels are and where we're seeing the main levels of support and resistance. And to do that, we will be using the horizontal line tool to plot our key levels. Now we can already see the candles here, both bodies closed pinpoint on this level. This also correlates perfectly with this retest here before pulling all the way down. So we already have a key level of resistance right there. And this is actually the barrier which is going to make or break the climb to new highs. We then get another horizontal tool and we can start to add around three to four levels. However, ideally I would stick to a maximum of two to three for starting off. You do not want to overcomplicate things. So we'll go down to this level here we can set right here another level. We can set one more level just here. This now correlates perfectly. And remember, there's no such thing as equal lines in cryptocurrencies. They do not have to have an equal symmetry. And now this is done, we can identify there is a trend line. Now this isn't always the case, but it does work in this scenario. And what we'll do is we'll draw it from this break here We'll connect that here, and there we have our trend line bounce. Once we go down to the daily chart, we can start to perfect this slightly better, just to make those confluences a little bit cleaner. We'll then break this down to there. We correlate here. Remember, this was a false spike. The real trend line is right here, as we can see due to the correlation with all of these other tests. So now we have our trend line, we can see we're in a nice uptrend. Higher highs, higher lows. For the current time being, we're trapped in a range bound market. However, overall, we are eventually climbing higher and we are making our way slowly towards the breakout point of the trend line and the resistance level. And we are still waiting to break this level to obviously continue to all time highs. So what we can do now is we can actually start plotting the intraday zone levels. Now you'll recognize this from the bonus lesson. So all we're going to do is, is identify key levels of support and resistance for intraday trading purposes. I can already notice two bodies closing pinpoint here. So for that, I'm going to set the horizontal ray tool. Remember for the weekly perspective, we will add the horizontal line. But when it comes to plotting intraday levels, we will be using the horizontal rate. Simply set the level here. And because it's based on these two candles here, I'm then going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to leave this a nice gray color so it does not affect the chart too much. We will then drag this from the beginning of the horizontal rate. And we will extend this all the way across the chart, finally matching this up with the wicks of the candles here. And there we have our first plotted zone. We can send this to the back to allow the candles to show more clearly. Now what we can see is we have a clear level of resistance. We've spiked here, fallen down, tested, tested, gone up, we've consolidated, we've then tested pinpoint, we've come down, we've tested again, just like you saw in the plotting zones level. We've now tested this zone again. And I actually mentioned this in the previous bonus lesson of plotting zones. We then spiked up, we've hit this level, we've pinpoint closed here, and we've now spiked down again, creating a new higher low and potentially going to roll over and touch the trend line. However, we can spot several more for intraday trading opportunities. And that would actually be right here. Again, I'm going to be using this for this purpose of the video. The horizontal ray correlates perfectly with the two bodies here and also correlates with the test down towards this level. I would then draw a zone to correlate with the wicks of this candle, going to the very high of the wick. We can then draw that there. 
centre the back and have a much cleaner layout for our charts. Now, as you can notice, we've tested all the way throughout this region, pinpoint accuracy with every single wick we've tested. Even the test down here has landed pinpoint on this zone. We can now see this is a valid level the price could spike to in the future. And due to having several levels plotted here, we do not need to put any more as it will really make the chart messy. Now we need to start looking at an overall structure and how this could potentially give us a nice setup. So for this, we will turn all the MAs to visible. We have the 8 and the 18 EMAs and the 200 EMA. As we saw in the previous lesson, Price has tested this 200 EMA to absolute accuracy and it has been acting as a support level for a long period of time. So when we zoom out, we can expect a previous manipulated spike to take place. Now should price be manipulated downwards, we can expect it to correlate with the 200 EMA once again. Now let's look for a breakout opportunity and a nice buy opportunity. So first of all, we have the Fibonacci setup. Remember the Fibonacci should always be on the weekly and daily. For this example, we'll start off with wick to wick, and then we can adjust from there onwards. So as we can see, this correlates well with the support level. The 78.6 also correlates approximately with another support level. However, this does not fit with our current trading pattern. So this means this level is not valid unless we continue to break lower, which is very possible. However, we have already set the support level there. So this does not matter too much. And we need to focus more on the intraday and the current present trading levels. So we can drag this up to the body of the candle. We can drag this lower. And again, we see this does not correlate with anywhere. So what we do is we drag this back up to the wick. We now have a more valid level, which correlates with previous supports here. However, I'm not satisfied with waiting for this to be tested. So what we're going to do is going to drag this up to the next level. We can then drag this down to the body of the candle. And just like that, the next leg has perfectly correlated with the support level here. Now, unlike Forex and stocks, where a simple wick to wick would cause an immediate retest level, this does not work in cryptocurrencies, and it is never based from the low to the high. It can actually be intraday swings within the A to B pattern, from the A to the B, that actually are the real valid levels. And as we can see, a perfect test of this support level here does show this is in fact the valid 61.8. And when we look from here, we can see we've tested this level twice since making the A and B formation. So the C extension has also been fulfilled. So we can now start looking towards the Fibonacci extensions for our next targets. Now what we would do in this situation is you can either draw a horizontal line here in line with the Fibonacci extensions. You could also draw the horizontal ray and again replicate the same method which would be this with the horizontal and rectangle tool. Again we have a nice zone. This correlates well. It matches the chart pattern. However, I do not want to do this for the time being. I actually want to do the same thing get the rectangle tool and draw a zone to match where the Fibonacci extension is. So the Fibonacci extension is in the middle of the rectangle. I would then apply this to the nearest valid wick and also apply this to the lowest of the wick, which is these two wicks here. This for me is a more valid level of potential resistance for when we spike up to the next leg. I always set my targets in green just to differentiate from the lowest support and resistance levels down here. Again, center the back and make your chart look slightly cleaner. Now from this point onwards, we can remove the Fibonacci tool and keep our chart looking slightly cleaner than usual. Now what we need to look for is we've tested from the Fibonacci. We've pulled back from resistance. However, we've created a higher low. One, two, three. The MAs have in fact crossed over to the upside once again. So we can look at this, and from a logical level, we can see that price will potentially close back within the red EMA here. 
So the 18 EMA is looking very likely to actually hold as support. We have spikes lower, however we have not broken this region here. And we can represent this with a rectangle just for the video purpose. We have not broken this zone. We've tested up once again. This means buy orders are accumulating in this area. And I can now look at this with a clear eye view and understand even a spike down to here does not mean we are reversing. It simply means we're going to be reversing back to the upside once a manipulation has happened. So I can remove this as I do not need it. I already know in my head this level is a represented support level. Now if you like you can go to the 4 hour chart just to get a bit of an understanding on what is going on. Now, as you can see the 200 EMA has been holding as resistance for an extended period of time. Now all this tells me is after loads of false breaks we've finally broken above. We've hit the next region of resistance, we've pulled back down and just like we've falsely broken out here, we've falsely broken out to the downside. The same way this has gone up, tested this zone several times and broken back lower. This is almost 90% the chance of what is going to happen but now in the opposite direction. Momentum this strong through key resistance levels usually means the upside break is preparing itself for the next bull run. So I can switch back to the daily. And if I use the buy tool, which I would never actually use for cryptocurrencies, but for the purpose of this video here, we can get the long position. Remember, we do not use stop losses with cryptocurrencies as we do not margin trade. If you do, then you can use this tool to plot your take profit and stop loss levels. For this example, we'll leave this flat as we do not have a stop loss. This line here would be our buy entry. We can now set up first target profit here. However, if you think about it, unless you want to time the market, which I do not recommend until you have a few months experience in this market, understanding how these key levels are respected. So for this example, I would actually go to the weekly chart as this is a long term investment. And we can calculate this by looking here. We can plot from the very high wick here to the very low here, just before the breakout. We can now apply this to the current bounce here, to the wick. We're now looking at approximately $535. Now we already have one target here, however this is not enough for me to be satisfied. I'm in this for the long term and I'm in no rush to get instant profits here. And as a matter of fact, I would not even be selling here, unless I saw a reversal forming. So all you do is plot another line here. Just like we've done with this zone, we create our long-term target with a much wider range. And add this here, remove the line, and we leave this as a long-term zone. We now have the weekly chart prepped. We have our position prepped. We've now entered, we've gone long, and we've bought however many ether we can afford to buy. We now see this rising already. The retest is already happening, guys. We can remove this as we no longer need this. The MA is holding as support, and we're seeing this in real time. We combine this with our support level, which has failed to break once again. We're now above the support level. We've tested. The MAs are holding as support. We're bouncing on the trend line, which potentially will be happening very shortly. A break of this level should cause another loop here and then we explode to the upside. I'm satisfied with that, that's given me enough bias that we are going to continue going long. Now if you like you can also bring this forward with a counter trend line. We have not used this much as there has not been many setups. But in this example there is a triangle here. Now as you can see this is invalid, so we actually draw this from the wick to wick, which correlates perfectly with this candle formation here. So we can also add this to the analysis. So we have one, two, three. We've rejected this level. A potential break now of this zone could be the catalyst that sends us higher. So what you can expect is actually consolidation now you've bought here, where price tests again and again and again until it's at breaking point and it can no longer bounce from triangle to triangle. We then explode from the triangle formation and this could be the final driver. 
So it's all about putting all of these scenarios and all of the odds in your favour. And once that's done guys, start removing levels. You do not need to overcomplicate things. In fact, I'd even remove this. I'm content and happy with my analysis. I know what's going to happen. The lower downside spike level is crucial as we're going long. When you're buying these for the long term and going long, you always need to have downside spike levels in mind. When price is continuously going upwards, keep the resistance spikes in mind, where price will spike to the upside and quickly pull back down to key levels. Now we've broken these down in depth, I'm going to quickly run through NEO and Litecoin without going in too much detail, just to show you this analysis on a full board perspective. So we'll jump to NEO and begin the analysis. We'll start off on the weekly once again. We can already see a trend line forming. We can see higher highs and higher lows. We have the trend line test here, nice and clean. This does not go back in time as it does start from this level here. Again, an extremely clean level. We can add the EMAs already. There's no harm in doing so. From here, we already know there's a trend line. We add some horizontal line tools. There's slightly more manipulative spikes on Neo and as we can see from the wicks. However, this does give us a nice level of support and resistance. That'll be right there also have another level right there which correlates with the wicks and all of the wicks testing here now once we go to the daily we can fine-tune these further once again as you can see the trend line here is absolutely perfect we can give it some adjustments however not much is needed for this scenario we can actually increase this here and what you see is you see a test here a test here a test of the wick here and a perfect test of this level here. I'm pretty satisfied with these levels. Now, with this, I'm actually going to remove this and save this for an intraday level. We have the crucial level of support here. We actually have a crucial level of resistance right here, as proven by the candle bodies closing here and the wicks testing twice. We can now add a counter trend line, as I can spot that immediately. We have one, two, three wick tests. We've bounced from this level. We're starting to replicate what looks like the Ethereum chart. Just to perfect this slightly, I'll pull this up. Then draw that like that. In fact, we can draw this like that. It's all about perfection, guys. Do not be afraid to fiddle around and get those levels absolutely perfect. We can see the MA crossover. We've broken to the upside. 18 EMA once again is holding our support. We've rejected a major support level. This is almost identical to the Ethereum chart. And just for some quick intraday purposes, I can draw another zone right here. Price is failing to break these levels. We have a test here. We've been holding for a very long time. We finally tested one more time and pulled back. However, we can expect another test of this level, another bounce and another breakthrough. Once we've broken $38.46, the upside is unlimited. And just like Bitcoin Cash, which many of you have seen, once we broke $616, the price absolutely soared to over $1,000 in one day. So what we'll do now is we'll start plotting the horizontal rattle. We can already see a key level right here doing that I'll plot it on this candle here the two bodies closed with pinpoint accuracy however there's multiple ways to do this I'm happy with this level but I'm also very happy with this level here so what I'll do is I'll stick to this level for the time being and I'll draw the wick just here center the back clean up the chart and start looking at this on a perspective that not many can actually do we've spiked down we've spiked up We've falsely broken from this level here. We've now come down again. So what we can see is we now have a key level of resistance for the intraday side, a key level of support for the intraday side, and we have our major levels on both sides, should we break out of either of these ranges. What I'll do from here is zoom out slightly. I can see a Fibonacci setup, and that would be from here. 
We've come up, we've tested, and just like that, the wick to wick has absolute accuracy. Now, whilst we could do this as well, which I will actually do for this purpose, as it's slightly more accurate, and there's a lot of confluences on this chart. The 61.8 lines up perfectly with the support level I set earlier. The 78.6, should we have a manipulative spike downwards, correlates perfectly with the manipulative spike and the wick being tested here. Should you have had this level set up from here to here already, this would have correlated perfectly. Now the way you actually predict Fibonacci levels and their accuracy is by looking back in time and seeing if these levels have correlated with previous price action, as we covered in the Fibonacci level. And as you can see, this was a key level of resistance here, and once broken, soared price into the absolute stratosphere. So now this Fibonacci is relevant, we can see the levels are respected. We can start to correlate the minus extensions to key levels. Now, as we can see, we have a nice test just here. If we go upwards, we are within the higher wicks and the all time highs for that matter. So all I'll do is I'll draw the zones nice and wide, starting from the wick here. Leave that there and the candle close. And for this wick, we will actually do this from this wick to here. These now correlate very well. We'll drag this up slightly in fact. We can now remove these lines. It's all about playing guys. It's all about finding the accurate and pinpoint levels. We can set these to green and we now have our upside targets. And we can accurately predict now, should we get another spike to all time highs? As we're seeing on a lot of the cryptos right now, we can easily expect a break of this level to take us straight to here. From this point, I can now recalculate are we going to see an even further push in the same day? And then we close back on this level. Or are we going to hit this level, reverse back to resistance turn support, and then continue going higher? It's all about preparing in advance. Last but not least, we'll move to Litecoin. The weekly chart once again. Another trend line. And as you may have seen yourself, the trend line for Litecoin is very well predicted. As we can see, all of my levels have somehow just presented themselves, which for the purpose of this lesson, we will actually leave them running. So here's what we do. We have the trend line set from wick to wick. We've rejected several times. We've come all the way up. We've pulled back down and we've hit a key level. We've rejected the trend line again. Another fake break of the trend line. Another two breaks of the trend line but we're failing to actually close below. My weekly levels, I set them here, as we have a strong barrier of resistance, which once was broken, sent us to the absolute moon. We came back down, we tested this level again. I'm satisfied with this as a key level of support and resistance. We've had another wick spike here. Moving forward, this is actually closed a bit lower. We can see the test here, the candle closing here, the candle closing there, another candle closing there. Just here, we have the candle closing here, perfectly correlating with the candle closing there. Now this is a target zone, and I've set this for when Litecoin breaks to the upside. So when we go to the daily, we can see these levels clearer. The trend line, as you can see, is almost to pinpoint accuracy. So many tests of this level, even after the largest spikes. So I know for a fact this level is valid. We look at the intraday levels now on a much clearer perspective. The resistance we set earlier correlates perfectly with Fork's breakout. Now whilst we could drag this down here to correlate perfectly with these two levels here, it does not make sense. And whilst I would love to put this here, it does not correlate as well as where I previously set it just up here. And you will see in the future this is exactly why this level has been set. Moving to the downside, we can see this key level of resistance turned support. Once we broke through this level, we pulled back down. We broke and spiked through. However, we pulled back immediately. And this is where the zones are coming in handy. Not only that, we, once we broke up, we hit this level here. We spiked up and we pulled back down. Now what we can also do that I've noticed is draw a level here move this down to the wick of the candle. 
we now have a larger zone which is large enough to get away with. Remember, if you start drawing zones down here, you're completely guessing, and there's not enough accuracy in this. However, dragging this up to here, we can see correlations on all levels. And once we spike up, we hit this level, spiked through, and we pulled back down. Now, the Fibonacci is absolutely crucial for this chart. As this shows, we've pulled up, we've come down, the C extension should be here. However, is this going to be a 61.8 or a 78.6? By grabbing the Fibonacci tool, we can draw this from the body. Seeing as the wick was such a manipulative spike, it's not likely it's going to be a valid level. By dragging this up, we can see two levels now. We have the candle body, we have the candle wick. For this example, the candle body is the most relevant. Now, as you can see, this correlates perfectly with the previous support floor here. And we can actually draw another horizontal ray tool right here. For that, we will do this here. We then add the horizontal and rectangle tool together. By drawing this zone, I've now marked the 61.8 and a key level of support, which would have been valid even without the Fibonacci. The 78.6 correlates perfectly with the predetermined support level I already had drawn. So again, we understand the Fibonacci extensions are going to be valid levels. So all we do is we quickly plot these levels here. This level correlates perfectly with the wick here. I now remove these tools. I grab my horizontal tool and draw a nice zone here. I then draw another zone just here, right in between this level. I remove these. I actually want to remove this level just for the sake of keeping the chart clean and also removing this level here. What we have now is two target zones. Once again, a breakout to the upside could take us easily to this level here. We will then potentially pull back, test the trend line once again, or we spike up, we pull back to this support level here and we break even higher to 77.50. We pull back to the support level, we then exceed to 82.41. Now guys, that is essentially all there is to this strategy, an overall understanding cryptocurrency charts. Once you start placing all the odds in your favour, your key levels should be as accurate as possible. This means spending hours on chart time, moving these levels, adjusting them, getting the ultimate accuracy and also remembering false breakouts happen all the time. So do not try and look for a hundred correlations of these levels. As you can see here, if I draw this to the absolute wick, there are levels respected here. However, it does not correlate with the current price action. By simply drawing this down back to this level here, we see a much more valid level where the wicks go through, but the candle bodies are closing on this level. Now it's much more important to see candle bodies closing on a level than wicks spiking through. So overall guys, this is all there is to it. Again, this is one of those chapters where you have to go back again and again and again. Get these levels as perfect as possible. And when it comes to placing your entries, for example right now, you could see this level has rejected and we're most likely going to be pulling back to the upside. Your targets are set here. All you have to do now is tell yourself, cool, there's a level here. If price pulls backwards, we're going to be seeing around $50. No problem. This is already expected. Another worst case scenario, we pull back to just here. I know price is not going to fall all the way down to $25. And should it do, I will just buy more and accumulate over a period of time. However, for this present scenario, simply I would buy right now and hold this until we start exceeding all-time highs. Even if we pull back from $83, I would not sell. I would simply buy more on the retests of the support levels I've already plotted. Now guys, I hope you've enjoyed this chapter. I will see you in the next chapter. Do not forget to take all of your notes down.